Hi there, and uh, welcome to Chapter 4. Uh, we're going to start off today with the angles and uh, degrees you're already familiar with, so as part of this will be a review, and then we're going to launch into radians, which uh, you may have seen in your calculator in the past, the, the rad key, so you're going to learn how to use that. Uh, we're going to learn to talk radians today. Uh, just to start off, let's talk about... Um, uh, the standard position for an angle. So if this is uh, your your x-axis and this is your y-axis and this is really showing mostly the first quadrant, isn't it? So you know what, let's just label them. We use Roman numerals usually for the quadrants. So that would be quadrant number one. Uh, quadrant number two over here, this would be quadrant number three and there's quadrant number four. So um, a reading here, it says, an angle in standard position has its center at the origin, so there's the, the center, and its initial arm along the positive x-axis. So whenever we measure angles in pre-calculus, uh, we start from this positive x-axis. So that's the initial arm. Having a little trouble writing here, initial arm. Uh, and then there are positive and negative angles. So I'm just going to draw out so here could be a terminal arm and there's my angle part in there and this would be my terminal arm where it ends so we would say that this particular angle terminal arm this particular angle that I drew uh, ends in the terminates in the first quadrant uh, scrolling down we have a positive angles uh, that go counterclockwise so again we're starting from the positive x-axis right and here we can go a positive angle and we go counterclockwise so that one's positive and we can go negative and again we start from this positive x-axis and here we're going negative so we're going to answer the question in which quadrant are these different angles so let's take a look at uh, 400 degrees so uh, it might be better to kind of draw out our own uh, x and y axis here. So 400 degrees, that looks like a positive value, so we're going to be going counterclockwise. So if I go all the way around like that, how far have I gone? I've gone 360 degrees so far. So I think, okay, if I've gone 360, 400 uh, minus 360, I've got 40 more degrees to go. So then I would be going another 40 degrees and I'd be over there. So which quadrant would I be in? Just to answer the question, I would be in quadrant number one. Okay, uh, you know, in fact, let's label this. This would start at zero degrees. Uh, this would be 90 degrees. Over here is 180 degrees. And here's 270 degrees. And in fact, you could even say that was zero degrees and it's also 360, right? Comma. 360 degrees. When you're going negative, now we're going to go the other way. Let's see if I can get my pen to look a bit neater. So if we start at zero degrees here. This would be 90 degrees negative, right? And this would be negative 180. This would be negative 270 up there. So it might make it easier for us to answer these questions here. So part B is negative 65. So negative 65, we're looking at my our negative diagram here. So this would be in this quadrant here, and that's quadrant number 1, 2, 3, 4. So we put quadrant number 4 there. How about 700 degrees? So that's positive. So we're going in the positive way. So we go uh, 360. Oh, boy. So if we take 700 and we subtract 360 from there, seems to me we get 340 so we're gonna go uh, 360 like that and now we've got 340 more to go so when we go 340 more we would end up just short of going twice around wouldn't we so if that was our terminal arm my uh, my final arm would be that direction over there so that would be quadrant number four again how about minus 150 degrees? Well, minus 150 is going to end up over there, so that would be quadrant number three. Okay. Scrolling down a little bit. Uh, here's an activity that we're going to be doing in class. i got to remember to bring the, the licorice, so probably when you've uh, seen this, we, you've probably eaten the licorice already, and it's just a fond memory. Uh, let me just check over here. There is a nice... Uh, animated GIF. Oh, no. I thought I had a nice GIF here. Let's just see here. No. 
Oh, I guess I lost it. Of a radian. We'll take a look at it a little bit later. We'll go back to, to this. Okay. So, uh, the radian measure of an angle. The formula for the circumference of a circle is C is equal to 2 pi r. Uh, so the circumference of an entire circle is 2 pi times the radius. Now if we have something that's called a unit circle, and in this unit circle we're going to say that the radius is 1. Now, there's no unit afterwards, it's not 1 centimeter. Uh, if you really want a unit you could say, well 1 what? Well 1 radius. Okay, so if you needed to put a unit, you could say one radius, but you really don't have to. Uh, therefore, the circumference of the unit circle is, see this is 2 pi r, we could say 2 pi, just 2 pi, because we've made the radius the unit, so 2 pi radiuses, radii. Uh, so therefore, um, well, 2 pi in a decimal equivalent. So this part is the exact value. This is a decimal that's rounded off. We kind of prefer to keep it in pi if we can, but if we want, need to put it in a decimal form, we can multiply out 2 times pi. Uh, this means that the distance traveled from the initial arm, so here is our initial arm, all the way around to the around the circle is 2 point, or 6.28. So in other words, if we were to find the length of that circle, we would get 6.28, we would get 2 pi. Um, in one revolution in degrees is 360 degrees. So uh, a radian, now in radians, now hopefully we've taken already this in class, but I'll just remind you one more time. If we take this, uh, I'm going to try to draw a freehand circle, here we go. Now if we say that the radius, there's the radius. If we take that same length of the radius and we kind of drape it around the outside of the circle, so that this red arc that I drew here, which just disappeared, is the same length as this radius here. So if that ang that angle would be one radian, okay, one radian of angle. So what we do is kind of neat if we say that this is one r, and it subtends an arc, or this arc is one is the same length. Uh, one r, but it's it's a curved line, right? So that's the licorice has to get curved. That ang angle in there is one radian, and one radian. Um, we can see over here. We can translate between degrees and radians. An entire circle, 360, is two pi radians. Uh, half of a revolution, maybe I'll do this uh, in blue. Looks nicer. Is 180 degrees. So um, half of a revolution, half of an entire circle, half of 2 pi will be pi radians. Um, one quarter of a circle, so if I have that again, I get down to 90 degrees, and that would be half of a pi. So usually we leave it in a fraction form, pi over 2. So these are all, this column here is the exact values, because it has a pi in it, right? And usually those are preferred. And this would be a... Uh, a rounded decimal equivalent, right? So this would be a, a decimal form. Um, one three hundred and sixtieth of a revolution. Well, if I take three hundred and sixty and I divide by three sixty, I would get one degree. Now, what if I take that two pi and I divide by three sixty? So it'd be like two pi divided by three sixty. Uh, and I can simplify that, can't I? That would be the same thing as pi over 180 degrees or uh, pi over pi over 180 so the number of radians would be I'm just going to erase the little degrees here because would you there we go try to erase it there's pi over 180 is what you want as your answer um, note that one radian is equal to 180 over pi degrees, which is the same thing as 57.3 degrees. So if I say that uh, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians, I can reduce that and I can say, well that would be the same thing as saying 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Um, so if I was to to make two fractions, two unit conversion fractions, uh, I could say 1 is equal to, and I can either put the 180 degrees in the numerator and the pi radians uh, in the denominator, or I can also put, put it the other way, I can put pi in the numerator and 180 degrees in the denominator.
You'll notice that when you do uh, degrees as a unit of measurement, you should always put that little circle indicating degrees. For radians, it's kind of fun. You actually don't have to put rad in there. Like I could put an R for rad, or I can just leave it blank. So it, um, these are my two unit conversion fractions. And so on the next page, depending on if I have degrees and I want to convert it to radians, I'm going to use this one because it'll cancel out degrees. Let's just see how that works on the next page here. So converting degree degrees to radians. So then we're going to use the conversion fraction. If I want to get if I'm given degrees like 30 degrees, I want to choose the one that has degrees in the denominator so that it's going to cancel it out and it'll have pi in the numerator, right? If you ever forget this, you can just kind of remember it, can't you? So 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. So in other words, pi is equal to 180. So what's on the numerator and what's in the denominator are equal. So you're really not changing the value, you're just changing the units. So this is how to change degrees to radians. So in my first example, 30 degrees times pi divided by 180 degrees Okay, so you see your degrees, your units are going to cancel out. Now I've got 30 divided by 180. I can uh, divide the top and the bottom by 30, so I'm going to get 6. So I get pi over 6. And there, there's my answer. Okay, It's better to leave it in terms of pi, because that's an exact value. You're going to see every once in a while the question is going to say, you know, what's the exact value for it? That means leave the pi there. Don't get your calculator out and say 3.14159.26 divided by 6 and put a decimal form. This is the way you want to have it. Okay, 225, 225 degrees. Again, we're given degrees, so we're going to multiply times pi over 180. Uh, so we really just have to simplify this fraction. So 225 over 180. Well, okay, clearly mul they're both multiples of 5. So let's divide these both by 5. So um, 25 divided by 5 is 5. 200 divided by 5 is 40. Uh, this divided by 5 is going to be equal to uh, 36. So, so far I've got it reduced to 30, 45 pi over 36. Those pretty clearly, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 9, so I'm going to get uh, 5 over 4 pi. You should get into the habit of doing these things um, without your calculator, uh, and then when you're done, you can do, well, you know, what is 5 divided by 4 and see that it's 1.25. Uh, and then you can see, is 225 divided by 180 the same amount? But really, you need to be able to get into the practice of doing this without your calculator because some questions uh, on my tests are going to be saying this is a non-calculator section, and clearly on the exam, there's a, a majority of the exam is without a calculator. Here's 720 times pi over 180. And I'm going, oh, this is 360 times 2, and this is half of 360. I, I'm pretty sure that this is going to work out as 4 times, like 4 times 180. If I double it and then double that again, I get 720. So I get 4 pi out of this. Okay. The bottom half now is converting radians to degrees. So if you're given radians, I, I want to put the radians part in the denominator, and the radians is pi, pi radians, and I got 180 degrees on top. So really it's just the reciprocal fraction, isn't it? So now I'm going to take 2 pi over 3, and I'm going to multiply that times 180 over pi, um, 180 degrees, okay? Now in this case my pi's are going to cancel out, so I'm not going to have a pi in the answer, and I will get 180 divided by 3, that works out nicely to 60, right? 2 times 60 is 120, so I get 120 degrees. Hope you can read that okay. Now on this one, 1 1.6, there's no pi in this term, so we're going to see that we will get a pi in the denominator, right? 1.6 multiplied by 180, <clears throat> let's see, 1 times uh, 180 plus 6 times that, 60 plus 48, so... What do I get as an answer? I think it works out to 288. Yeah, 288 over pi degrees.
Okay, and it's just fine to leave it like that, 288 degrees over pi. If they wanted you to find the decimal equivalent, then you could uh, use your calculator on that. This is safer just to leave it as pi because then it's in an exact value. Uh, here we're going to multiply this again times 180 degrees over pi. And my pi's cancel each other out. 180 divided by 6 is 30 times 5 is 150 degrees because the degrees come from right here, 150 degrees. So there are my uh, three answers to this section. Put little boxes around there so my teacher finds my answers nicely. Uh, that's it for today. It's a nice and short one. Here is your homework. Pages, uh, page 175 in your textbook, questions 1 to 4. Thank you.